वेलकम बैक प्रॉब्लम सेवन डैश फोर्टी स्टेटमेंट इज द सिंपली सपोर्टेड बीम इज बिल्ट अप फ्रॉम थ्री बोर्ड्स बाय नेलिंग देम टुगेदर एज शोन द वुड हैज एलाउबल शेयर स्ट्रेस 1.5 मेगापास्कल एंड एलाउबल बेंडिंग स्ट्रेस 9 मेगापास्कल द नेल आर स्पेस्ड एट एस इज इक्वल टू 75 मिलीमीटर एंड ईच हैज ए शेयर स्ट्रेंथ ऑफ वन किलो न्यूटन determine the maximum allowable force p that can be applied to the beam so you can see this is the beam having a pin support at point a clear and there is a roller support at point b and that is acted upon by a concentrated load p at the mid the length of this beam is 2 meter clear and that is made up of three boards that are this is board 2 this is board 3 and they are nailed together to form this i beam so we have to find this p so what we will do is that we will find p in for the allowable shearing stress as well as allowable bending stress and then we will check with which one is to select so let's start with the solution so first step is that if you remove this pin support at point a so you will be having a reaction force which is r a and if you remove this rail roller support at point b so you will be having r b So we'll find this R A and R B by using equation of equilibrium. So first equation of equilibrium is sum of all moment about point B is equal to zero and taking the counterclockwise moment as positive. So about this point B, one moment is P into perpendicular distance is one, and that is producing counterclockwise, so it will be positive. And the second moment due to this R A into perpendicular distance is two meter, and this is producing clockwise, so it will be negative. But their sum must be equal to zero. So I will write R A into two minus plus P into one is equal to zero. So two R A is equal to P. So it means that R A is equal to P by Two. Now we have this R A. You can find R B by using second equilibrium condition that sum of all forces along y direction must be equal to zero and force support taken as positive. So three forces. One is R A. The second one is minus P and third one is R plus R B. Their sum must be equal to zero. So R A is P by two minus P plus R B is equal to Zero. So from here you will get p by two minus p will be equal to minus p by two plus r b is equal to zero. So from here you will also have r b is equal to p divided by two. Now you have this r a and r b. So what we will do is that we will go to Draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. Why we draw the shear force and bending moment diagram? Because we will need if we use the ta allowable criteria, so it will be equal to V max into Q divided by Q max divided by I into T. So here we will need V max maximum shear force, and if you use allowable shearing stress, so you will having maximum bending moment into C divided by I. Therefore, we will need this bending moment as well as maximum shear force. So let's draw the shear force and bending moment diagram. So if you take the vertical line from the end of the beam, clear, and then horizontal line, which is used to show the length in meter x in meter. Here you will be having shear force. Let one each division is um, p by two. So this is p by two, and this is minus p divided by two, and this is the mid length, one meter each. Now moving from at point A, you can see you have R A, which is equal to p by two. Clear. So we will first your first point will be this one. And moving from this till the mid, there is no other shear force, so it will remain horizontal. Now at the mid you have minus p, so p by two minus p will be equal to minus p divided by two. So shear force will change from p by two to 
minus p by 2 and then it will remain same till the end because there is no other force and at the end you can see you have rb which is equal to p by 2 so it will go upward and it will become 0 at this point so this is your shear force diagram now we will draw the bending moment diagram so for bending moment diagram again you will take a horizontal line in order to show the length which is x in meter and you here you will be having a bending moment and let each division is 0. Point, uh, p by 2 is 0. 0.5 so this is 0. 0.2 times p so this is 0. 0.4 p you can take it as per your convenience so this is 0. 0.5 times p so now you can see if the moment at this point is 0 because x is equal to 0 so your first point will be this one at the mid what will be the moment so you can see the area under the shear force diagram is this area and this area is p by 2 multiplied by 1 is equal to p by 2 so at mid the the bending moment will be p by 2 and as this uh, shear force is a horizontal line with zero degree so bending moment will be one degree higher and slope will be increasing because area under the shear force diagram is positive area now the second area under the shear force diagram is this area which is minus p by 2 into length which is 1 so minus p by 2 so at this end we will have plus p by 2 minus p by 2 will be equal to zero at this point and you can see that uh, you will get a straight line with slope decreasing because this area is negative area and shear force is a horizontal line there that's why the bending moment will is a one degree line straight line and slope is decreasing so this is your uh, shear force diagram and this is your bending moment diagram now we will need uh, moment of inertia i for the beam as well so you can see this is the cross section of the beam and if we take the half of the beam so this is symmetrical about neutral axis so this is your this is its neutral axis so what we will do is that we will find the moment of inertia by taking this as a rectangular box minus these two hollow portion so i will write it uh, 1 over 12 this width is 100 millimeter so in meter it is 0 0.1 meter and this total height is 200 plus 25 plus 25 is 250 so height is 0 0.250 cube minus if you subtract 25 from 100 so remaining will be 75 so 75 into this height is 200 so i will write it minus 1 over 12 into 0 0.075 into 0 0.2 cube so when you solve this you will get moment of inertia of these beams comes out to be 80.20 8 3 into 10 to power minus 6 meter power 4 now we'll find this uh, p by using bending criteria so we will use bending criteria first so we know that allowable bending stress is maximum bending moment into c divided by i what is c here so c is distance from neutral axis till topmost so this will be equal to 125 millimeter c is equal to 125 millimeter because 200 divided by 2 is this distance is 100 and the remaining upper one is 25 so c is 125 millimeter so allowable bending stress is given as 9 megapascal you can see over here so 9 into 10 to the power 
6 is equal to maximum bending moment so maximum bending moment is p by 2 from bmd so p divided by 2 multiplied by c is 125 millimeter so in meter it is 0 0.125 divided by i so i is 80.2083 into 10 to the power minus 6 so from here you will get P is equal to 9 into 10 to the power 6 multiply by 2 multiply by 80.20 into 10 to the power minus 6 divided by 0.125. So when you calculate it, you will get the value of P based on bendings come, comes out to be 11417.41. And that will be in newtons. So in term of kilonewton, P will be equal to 11.4 kilonewton. So this is the value of P that can be applied on the beam that is based on bending. Now what we will do is that we will find it for, for uh, share, allowable sharing stress. So for allowable sharing stress, we know that ta allowable is equal to V max into Q max divided by I into T. So we have V max from the shear force diagram that is equal to P by 2. We have I, we have thickness because thickness is this 125 millimeter clear. We do not have Q max. So first we will find Q max. So Q max is a distance from neutral axis, the upper half portion, we will find Q max for this portion, this shaded portion. So there are two elements, one is this and the second one is this. So we know that Q dash max is equal to Y dash into A. So for first, we have uh, uh, 0 0.1, this first one this first one we have the area is 0 0.1 into thickness 0 0.025 and y dash is distance from neutral axis till mid y1 dash okay let me zoom it So this is your y1 dash which is equal to 25 divided by 2 which is 12.5 uh, plus this 100 is equal to 112.5 millimeter. So I will write it over here again into 112 millimeter in term of meter is 1125 plus second area now second area is this one so this area is 100 by 25 millimeter so 100 is 0 0.1 multiply by 0 0.025 and what will be its y2 dash so y2 dash is distance from neutral axis till mid of this section which is this one and this y2 dash is 100 divided by 2 which is equal to 50 millimeter so here you will write y2 is equal to 0 0.05. So when you calculate it, you will get q is equal to 0 0.40625 into 10 to the power minus 3 cubic meter. Now you have all the value you have allowable sharing stress is 1.5 megapascal. So just put the value T allowable is equal to V max into Q max divided by I into T. So 1.5 megapascal into 10 to the power 6 is equal to V is P divided by 2. 
Q is 0 0.40625 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by I and I is 80.2083 into 10 to the power minus 6 multiply by thickness which is 0 0.025 meter okay so when you solve this you will get you will keep this p on this side and you have to transfer or rearrange the other terms so you will get p is equal to 14808 newton or p is equal to 14.80 kilo newton so this is the load that is due to allowable sharing stress so we will color it the first one was for bending the second one is for allowable sharing stress and now we will use a third criteria that is for shear flow shear flow so for shear flow we know that uh, um, shear flow q allowable is equal to shear flow is equal to f divided by s so f is given strength actually this strength is in kilonewton so it is horizontal shear force so 1.5 into 10 to the power 3 divided by s is 75 millimeter which is 0 0.075 so when you calculate it it will be 20 into 10 to the power 3 newton per meter so shear flow is 20 into 10 to the power but we know that shear flow is equal to v into q divided by i so what will be the q for that so q is this area Q will be this area this area will be where there is a nail clear so this area so this area is 0 0.1 millimeter into 0 0.025 meter and y dash will be 11 uh, 0.1125 so I will write it Q is y dash into a so y dash is 0. 1125 and area is 0 0.1 multiply by 0 0.025 that is q so q will when you solve this it will be equal to 0 0.28125 into 10 to the power minus 3 cubic meter now what you have to do is that you have to put it in this equation so uh, q is 20 into 10 to the power 3 v is p by 2 q is 0 0.28125 into 10 to the power minus 3 divided by i is 80.2083 into 10 to the power minus 6 clear so when you solve this uh, this value so you will get p is equal to 11.4 kilo newton okay one more correction here when you solve this this p will be not this but this will be equal to 11.550 newton which is equal to 11.5 kilonewton clear so kindly make this correction now you can see we have three values that is this p is based on bending this p is based on allowable sharing stress and this p is based on uh, uh, shear flow so what will be so we conclusion is that we will select P is equal to 11.4 kilo Newton which is the smallest one and that can verify all the condition 
that will support the bending as well as the maximum uh, allowable shearing stress and this was all about problem 7-14 i hope you have enjoyed this video and you have learned from it those who are new to my channel then subscribe it and press the bell icon so that you can get notification about my latest video if you have any question you can ask me in comment section thank you for watching